I think so many people are hung up on being able to attach a crane, a, a sideboard bed, and a hitch trailer so much that, in my opinion, I think you're griefing yourself. And I know a lot of folks are going to disagree with me on this, but I really believe that you're. it's pretty much griefing yourself. Okay, I'm just going to drive straight here. I'll activate diff lock, and I'll, I'm going to turn like I'm going to go up this hill, okay? Kind of like, you know, let's say this was a path and we're just going up this way. Easily. Now, notice that I did use a truck here that most people can agree with a raised suspension, even without a raised suspension, it's not the most stable truck in the game, especially with the North American small crane. Because this, this is heavier than the Russian small crane. We also have a set of two-piece cargo, which is the concrete slab, heavy cargo. So I have heavy cargo set high. The weight is not necessarily set low on the truck as it is. And yes, there you go. And it flips over. Okay, so here is semi-trailer. I'm turning. I have no angle. Okay, and I'm going to talk about angles here in a second. And you see what happens. I only have one, a two set of cargo in here, kind of to keep things very um, similar with cargo holds. And you can see it tips over. Very similar things, right? So right here, you can see I'm making a left-hand turn. I immediately know that I'm going to flip over right there. That little jut up like that. And then when I came down on my front tires, I immediately know I'm going to tip over if I continue. So as soon as my tire comes down, I stop, turn my tire back up. Diff lock engaged, and then I just basically kind of creep up, creep up, creep up. Get to where I think I can go, and then turn in. You see how, if I would have kept turning right or left there, I probably would have dumped it. But I turned away from my, or into my tip. Okay, so we continue. You'll see I'll be toggling on and off diff lock because it's telling me I don't, I don't need it, but every time I turn it off... My pace drastically slows because, yeah, it's not forcing power to all tires. So you'll see, I'm trying to hold on to balance here. So looking at this turn, knowing what I have on hand right now, I know for a fact I see downsloping terrain. I see I do have a winch spot here. I probably could hook up to, maybe I could, probably can't get to this one from my hip. So turning right into this is probably going to... Take me off balance. Let's be real. Which it kind of does. But you see, as soon as I go off balance here, do you see how I let out my tire? I'm, I'm already starting to turn back into this. And you see, at a at certain point, I said to myself, it's either I turn down in or I winch. And I chose to winch right there. I probably could have saved this if I just turned all the way out. And just went down the hill but i wanted to continue this course so we winched jarred ourselves back to our wheels right there again i could have kept turning in after i released i just released this so if i would have kept this turn in this i would have dumped it again but you'll see i i let my wheel straighten out which is why i believe you should use the setting steering wheel let it let it roll out continue Regain balance. Now I turn, slow down a second, let the truck kind of respond, and we continue. Straighten down my wheel again right there. If I would have kept turning to stay on course to hit this trail flush, once again, I tip over because I'm digging this tire. If I had this tire cut like this, this way, I'm digging that tire into the ground and I'm not allowing it to just kind of get my balance by going forward. I think it just it's just kind of little in my mind I think it's a very simple concept. But when you feel you're going to turn off turn uh, basically tip over to your right or left hand side, you turn into where you're tipping over to save yourself. Now, here I know I can get away with this because I'm I'm starting to head uphill. Okay? I'm heading uphill, so therefore this slope is less of a factor to tip me over left or right because I'm now I now have my nose basically uh, basically a 45 for where this hill is coming down. So and I'm also even turning into it even more. So I know I can get away with this move in this in this case. So you can see, yeah, boom. And then now 
because of this little hill here, I'm tipping to my left side. So at first I turned into it and then I let the truck just kind of take me. So this, it's all about feel, like feeling out how the terrain is hitting your truck, how you respond. And then this last little area I'm going to show you is essentially tipping the truck over. This is literally how you tip it over. So going down around this hill, what I probably should do right now, right now, you see how I'm already jarred off balance. This is where you turn straighten your wheels out and then immediately turn left to regain your balance. But I wanted to show when most players do, they, they think they can take this turn and yeah, here's the product. Like it's given me the warning signs. It even gave me more than I, I should right now. If I would have rolled out maybe a split, maybe like three tenths of a second earlier, I could have saved this. And there it is. Same test here with uh, semi trailer. If lock engaged, I have no angle here. I have a slight angle with truck and trailer. However, you're going to see I noticed some things that when I don't have an angle with my truck and trailer, I know for a fact that this is, this is going to happen. Also, weight down on wheels. It's lifting up my front end. I don't have steering capabilities, so we need a different angle. This is where I kind of noticed that. Okay, let's back in, get a little jackknife in, get an angle, repop up here. I might wheels my wheels do come up off the ground here whenever I crest this hill, but that's just that's just what happens. Okay, so like the last video, this is gonna be the difference of why a semi-trailer is better. I have no angle here. Okay, I just want, I kind of want to, to really hammer home this point. I should have tipped over here. When I take this turn, you're going to notice I don't have any angle for my truck and my trailer, which would give me balance, which would keep either or balanced, right? But we'll kind of explain this a little later in the video. But you can see I hardly have any angle. And this is where you're very susceptible to tip over in a, in a tippy situation. When your truck and your trailer have no angles, and just because I had length out here that was still on stable ground, it kind of kept my truck down. You'll see this going around this corner. Do you see that? Because this part of the trailer is hooked up. This is all connected. This part of the vehicle wasn't really, or this part, I, I basically consider this a vehicle now because it's all, it's basically one entity. So it's hooked up, but back here, this balance is still stable. For the most part, this truck, not so much. It's in the same spot that our previous trial tipped over and I had the quick winch, if you remember. Now, I just exited this little dip where this where this happens. So I'm actually coming out of this. So the truck is actually getting some force built up here to kind of bump itself up. I'm also starting to build an angle. So then we're fine. I immediately know I'm okay. And we continue. <laughs> A little bit of off the ground action there. You can see, I'm, I think my pace here with the semi-trailer is pretty much on par, if not faster, than just the normal, having it on my frame. So here, I just pretty much hold the gas. I know I can get away with this, this maneuver. And if you see, same kind of thing, wheels are coming up. But the thing is my trailer is pretty much secure. And I also have this angle in where it's not going to, because of my hitch attachment here, it's the trail and the trailer is angle. It's not going to allow my truck to tip over to my left-hand side. And I know this because of just how, how this works. So I know I can get away with it. Now I pulled the trailer up and we continue. And then this is where I'm going to show you guys a little bit. I do a little bit of running around here with this trailer. And I'm just show, I'm just going to literally show how angles stop you from tipping. And uh, we'll, we'll just watch a little bit of this. See, like right here. You can see how in this scenario, I'm turning in. If I had cargo here on my frame, I'm probably reaching for my winch right now. But you can also see I have this, this angle that's almost a right angle. Yes, my trailer is not feeling too well, okay? But also, my trailer right now is keeping me balanced upright, but when it gets to being parallel with the slope of this hill, this is where it can tip me over. However, my cab is trending uphill. So if I can get my cab uphill before this, this angle 
depletes to basically a straight angle, or I just continue without turning uphill and getting my cab uphill, I will tip. But you can see, getting my cab uphill, now I'm here, it rebalances the trailer, so I kind of it kind of works in tandem like that. Oh yeah, these little things are going to pop up. So you can see there, the trailer struck the tree. You can see the trailer's vastly off balance right now, but because my truck is legitimately going up this hill, it's rebalancing this trailer. But if my truck was going this way, if, if my angle was any more shallow and my, my nose was off this way, I tip over immediately. You see, I just rebalanced it right there just because of that angle. And I know that. This is why using angles, again, this is probably one of the more drastic examples. The trailer's tipping over. <laughs> trailer's tipping over. The truck is tipping over too. But because I steer into it, I regain this angle, and I immediately balance both of them. This is legitimately how you drive a semi-trailer in SnowRunner. You just work your angles. And this is one of the more tippy trucks in the game. This is the, the Paystar with a race suspension and a small crane. Okay, here, here's a, actually a pretty good example. Is going downhill. Okay. Now, you're going to see my, my saddled trailer here is going to be almost parallel with the, with the way the hill, the grade of the hill is going. Okay. But my truck is going to be turned off this way. And you're going to see, like, if, if, this, if this was just me with no trailer, period, and I turned off like this, I'm immediately tipping. But because I'm connected here and the trailer is stable, it keeps my truck upright. Like right here. I don't survive that. With this same load and on, on frame load without a trailer, I don't survive this. Unless I make a maneuver to either quick winch this or turn myself out this way. And I continue to turn. You can see, I should have tipped over. With this same maneuver, cargo on frame, I would have tipped over. But because my trailer was still stable, I have weight out here counteracting what, what I'm doing up front. And that is essentially, I think if, uh, if people knew that type of stuff, they would walk away from the whole hitch trailer thing. And I, I see it so much, man. People talk about... Oh, it can't have a hitch trailer, um, sideboard bed hitch trailer combo. They say that about like the Voron Grad. They'll say that about the Tega 6436. And it's just like, if they knew the maneuverability you could have with a saddled trailer, if you just took the time to just learn how to drive it, it's you, you, you would really never look back. Missing that one cargo piece is not really a big deal. It really isn't. Yeah, you can disconnect the trailer from a hitch trailer and then you can still use the truck to deliver small things have more maneuverability more maneuverability that way but still I think it's a great thing to do but yeah that's just me not to mention you still have better performance in mud with a saddle trailer versus a hitch trailer exactly Dave exactly which is a horrendous trailer yes it drags through everything. You're putting, you're putting probably just amount, just enough. I would say you're putting more weight on the hitch trailer than the vehicle you're pulling it with. And if if anyone knows anything about weight, <laughs> more weight that's dead that you're pulling is not going to help your progress. It's going to make things harder. With a saddle trailer, the weight's actually benefiting pushing into the terrain. So I think the upsides for a saddle trailer far exceed hitch trailer options. Far exceed. Because so I can take a tippy truck and drive it like it's crazy stable, which is like the Paystar. Paystar is not a stable truck. <laughs>